Hello again, everyone. Welcome to the Rome Floyd Chamber Small Business Spotlight. This is Rome Business Radio. We are broadcasting from the Hardy Realty Studios inside the Manus Business Center located at the corner of Broad Street and Turner McCall Boulevard in downtown Rome, Georgia. I am Roger Manus with Rome Business Radio. And I'm Thomas Gissett with a Rome Floyd Chamber. What's going on, Thomas? Not much. Uh, well, a lot, a lot, actually. So um, <laughs> You have brought a big crowd, big crowd today. With, with you today. Yes. So uh, would you mind doing the introductions? And we're going to quiz you on the names and the pronunciations. Absolutely. <laughs> so ladies first, uh, let's go ahead and get started with uh, across from me. It's Jennifer Navichoki with Group Community Care. That's right. Did Good I morning. say that right? That's right, yes. Yay. <laughs> to my right, I have Mandy Perry with Life Church of Rome. And then we have Joan Ledbetter. She represents the Kiwanis Club of Rome today. And then we have Mark Dodd and Matthew or Matt Ruckman from Good News Christian Magazine. Hey, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hello, how are we? Good. Everybody good? good. Yes, thanks for having us this morning. Uh, we appreciate you coming. Um, we, As we mentioned before, when I was giving you a little prep, this is the cocktail party without the cocktails, but we may have some teetotalers in the room because I don't know. <laughs> um, but 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 let's get started here with, with Jennifer, and I'm not going to say your last name because Thomas did such an excellent job with it. Uh, tell us a little bit about Amerigroup Community Care, what it is that you guys do. Of course. Thank you for having us. So Amerigroup is um, one of three plans, CMOs, care management organizations, or just healthcare plan for Medicaid, peach care for kids, and planning for healthy babies. And what I do is I promote and educate all about the value added benefits. So from aside from medical dental vision, we do offer extra benefits. And those are like the Boys and Girls Club memberships that we offer, the Girl Scouts, um, the the, uh, oh, we got some new ones this summer. So now we're offering also like the Amazon vouchers, DoorDash gift cards, utility assistance, Sam's Clubs for our uh, moms, printing moms. So there's so many benefits that we offer. So this is this is an extension of Medicaid. Is that right? Are, are you, are you... So we're a plan for Medicaid. Plan for Medicaid. So once you get approved for one of those three programs that I mentioned, um, you'll be eligible to choose one of the healthcare plans. And AmeriGroup is one of those plans that you can choose. And gotcha. we'll cover all your medical expenses, dental, vision. So so this is for this is for lower income people. Correct. Yes. And but what you do specifically is you make them aware that it's it's of all of these extras that are included that they may not know about. And all, the, all, the, all these other ways to enrich their life as being a part of this. Absolutely. I always like to explain it as like, you know, your health care, all your health care mail that you get. You don't open it. You probably just toss it away, right? So that's why there's me because I know probably our families also toss away those packages. So um, I like to partner up with organization, faith-based organizations, um, community-based organizations, um, so we can reach our families out there and I can, you know, educate them about the extra value, value added benefits that we offer. Okay. Great. Moving around the table here, let's let's check in with Joan, uh, uh, who is here representing the Kiwanis Club of Rome. Broad overview: What is the Kiwanis Club? It's a service organization, but Correct. what what does that mean? Good morning. <laughs> Kiwanis Club of Rome is a very active service organization here. It's an international organization. Our focus is on youth, children, high school, college. Um, that involves key clubs and Circle K groups and. Um, those are the uh, high school, Key Club, and Circle K College, and we have some very active Key Clubs here. We need to get working more with the colleges. We used to have a real active one at Barry, but we also do a lot of other things in the organization. Um, we do we have speakers at every meeting, and I, I see the panel here of some people I can hit up to come speak, <laughs> always looking for speakers, and we also do a lot of other things that don't involve youth, like picking up trash. We coordinate with Keep Rome Floyd beautiful. Um, but our main focus is on youth, giving them scholarships for college, having a music and arts uh, competition, and scholarships come from that. We work with Pepperell High School one-on-one -on -one very closely, and lots of other programs and activities that have to do with keeping youth safe, helping them become leaders, and preparing them for college or whatever they want to do after high school. And the Kiwanis Club's been around forever, right? 1919. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. But they got really smart around 1987 and admitted women. <laughs> it was men. It was founded by a group of businessmen, but they admitted women in the late 80s. And, of course, you know, that was that was a very smart move because women, you know, get out there and do, do, do. But we... Um, 
We try to stay active. It was really a challenge during COVID, but we're right. back meeting again and doing a lot. Yeah, that's COVID has kind of been a running theme about how it's impacted businesses and organizations on this show. And we were on Zoom for months, mm-hmm. uh, just trying to keep the show going and, right. and thankful to be back in studio. Um, Mandy Perry with Life Church. Tell us about Life Church. Yeah, so Life Church has been um, in the Rome community for about 13 years, um, serving and just our heart is to love God and love others. And we provide Sunday morning services at 930 and 11. Our location is at 19 John Davenport, which we kind of had some laughs in the room about maybe frequenting that place at another establishment. But we are grateful to be there and serving our community and just watching God work in lives. And um, so thankful for just the opportunity to be together and to worship together and to grow together um, and look for opportunities to, to serve one another and encourage each other in our faith. So the church started in 08. Yes, but, sir. But like a startup church, you bounced around from location to location to, to you found this one. We did. And, and as your as your membership grew, have you been around since '08? I have. Okay. Yes, my husband and I actually moved to Rome um, to be a part of Life Church. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what is your what are your specific duties there? So I am the children's director. So I handle um, all the environments for our children birth through fifth grade. Um, we call it Kid Life. Super fun, um, awesome environments that are Christ centered. Um, we believe in getting the word into the little hearts and memory verses and Bible stories and a lot of fun too. We want the children to understand that the Bible is living and active and we want it to be a part of their lives in every way. We love partnering with families, much like my friend here. And um, we know that in order to help a child's faith grow, we've got to partner with parents. At best, I'm going to see a child 52 Sundays a year, but mom and dad see them 365 days. <laughs> They're long. So we really love to do family worship experiences and things where the family can come together. Um, we love sending home resources that the family can do throughout the week too. Um, I mentioned my husband, he's our worship pastor. So we, we love all in the family. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it's great. You mentioned that I had a memory pop in my brain. Oh, yeah? I, I still have, um, you know, being born here, went to sure. First Methodist Church. I still have my Young Readers Bible that was given awesome. to me in the 1970s. I love that. That's awesome. Uh, it's actually easier to read. Yeah, yep. <laughs> sometimes it is for sure. Um, all right, let's check in with with. Ironically, you, I know you guys have heard this a hundred times, <laughs> but the guys from Good News Christian Magazine are named Mark and Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> so, and we joked about where Luke and John. Right, right. And of course, <laughs> Thomas from the Chamber is here, but he doubts no doubt. everything. No <laughs> doubt. No <laughs> doubt. So if. If it worked before the show, I figured it would work during right. the show. That's right. So, uh, but Matt, Matthew, you go actually go by Matt. So yeah. just tell us about Good News Christian Magazine. Yeah, so Good News Christian Magazine, we started up about 10 years ago um, in Cleveland, Tennessee, with just the idea of trying to put an encouraging, you know, uplifting magazine, you know, community-based out in the community. Mm-hmm. And so um, one way that we were able to do that is supported through local advertisers. And then we use articles written by anybody in the community. We want to know what kind of experiences you've been through, what's going on in your family, what's going on in your business, what's going on in your marriage, what's going on through your children or your church. So we want to give anybody the opportunity to write for us. And you don't have to be a writer, you know, to contribute to good news. That's what we got an editor for. So um, we've got an editor that'll make anybody sound good and look good. Uh, but we just want people to be engaged, and I think that's what makes us still relevant today. Um, and then we had a, a huge change with COVID. Uh, last year, you know, we were primarily uh, community distribution to churches and businesses, which we still are very active and a part of. Mm-hmm. But we changed it up and adding direct mail, uh, social media, digital. Mm-hmm. And then recently, we just launched, he just shot the first videos on Tuesday. We're now offering professional video shoots. Mm-hmm. Or we can come into your church, come into your business, do an interview, do a tour, and that's their their opportunity to make it their business personal to the people of Rome and the community. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> Go ahead. I mean, that's really a great example <laughs> yeah. of COVID doing good. Yeah. You know, I think sometimes we we struggle because we do see the bad, and I'm sure your organization yeah. has as well. But but that's awesome to see yeah. how you have to evolve and you have to keep thinking. Right. How are we going to reach people and I mean, man, that's really opened up a whole new avenue to your business, and I'm sure I'm sure churches and other folks are very grateful. Yeah, and I've got a little story if we got time. Are you good for it? It's a podcast. Talk, baby. (laughs) So, so one of my favorite interviews I've ever done. We've gotten to meet so many cool people: Uh, Herschel Walker, Bobby Bowden, uh, Sean Alexander, a a bunch of sports athletes. Recently, we met uh, John Schneider, 
and Dan Tominsky. Dan Tominsky wrote Man of Constant Sorrows. Um, so from, got to meet from, from oh, of, oh brother, where art thou? Yeah. <laughs> and so got to meet a lot of really cool people through the magazine. When you're media, it's amazing what doors, mm-hmm. you know, God opens for you to meet people. But one of my favorite people that, or person that we've met, uh, was Bobby Bowden. Yeah. And if you know, Bobby cool. Bowden passed away recently. recently and man, he was, he was as real as they come. When we were, we were sitting there in a room full of a bunch of men and women, business women and men, um, and we were there with our son. I mean, Bobby took our son, and he sat on the couch with him, ignored everybody for about 30 minutes in the room, and just poured into our son's life. And just to see, you know, a man that's uh, that loves God and loves, you know, loves kids and what our future, you know, he, he understands where our future is going mm-hmm. uh, by pouring into the youth. And so when, before we did our interview with him, he, um, his best friend, I talked to him. He said, ask him about his baseball story. <laughs> and I said, baseball? I said, he's a football coach. <laughs> and so when we got on, we, we were talking about baseball and, or football. And I asked him, I said, I was told to ask you about our, your baseball, your story. And he said, okay. He said, who told you that? He said, I said your friend told me. And uh, he said, every single kid that came through the Florida State program, he personally shared the gospel with. Mm-hmm. Every single person. And uh, he said back when he played college ball, he played baseball for, I think it was um, Howard okay. University. Okay. And he said his very last game, he was playing against Auburn. And he said he had, he was, had an excellent batting average, but never hit a home run. He said, I've always wanted to hit a home run, but I've never been able to hit a home run. He said, every ball that I hit is a line drive. About five foot tall, <laughs> straight out in, into the field. He said, so I got up last game of the year. Again, true story. He got up to bat. He said, I wanted a home run so bad. He said, the first pitch came in. He said, that was my pitch. He said, it was perfect, straight fastball right down the middle. He said, the second pitch, he knew that the way the pitcher somehow lined up, he said that he knew that same pitch was coming. That pitch came in. He hit that ball as hard as he could. But it still was five foot right straight out into left field. He said, but back then, he said, there was no walls. So as he went and he rounded first, he saw that ball was still rolling. And those boys, he said, were still chasing that ball. <laughs> he said, um, so he, he knew he was going to get at least a triple out of this. So he ran and he touched second base. And on the way to third, he said, what do you do on the way to third? He said, you watch your coach. He'll either tell you to get down. He'll tell you to, you know, stay up or he'll tell you to keep going. And he was waving me on. He said, I might get a home run out of this. <laughs> he says, as I got to third base and I touched that base, I heard that base coach whisper in my ear, you better hurry up. <laughs> he said, I knew that ball was coming. He said, that ball came from outfield to the shortstop, shortstop to the catcher. He said, I saw that catcher catch that ball. He said, I lowered my shoulder as hard as I, as low as I could. And I hit that boy and that ball popped out. He jumped over him and hit home plate. I mean, cleared the bench, senior year, last game, got his home run. That catcher got up and dusted himself off, threw the ball to first base. They said, you're out. He didn't touch first base. Oh, Oh, no. no. (laughs) So Bobby Bowden got robbed of his home run. But here's here's the thing he told me. He said, on second base, those are those things that we're doing now. We're share, we're out sharing in the community, and we're here to encourage each other's business and, and uh, help each other along the way in life. He said, third plate are those things that you're doing at home to pour, you know, into your family and to help, you know, steward your children, you know, to grow and, and be followers of God and, and grow in the Word and things that we're doing at church as right. well. He said, what's home plate? Home plate's heaven. But if we miss Jesus on first base, none of it will matter. And, he's, and so I told him, I said, I'm going to steal that story. I said, because good it's news good not to share. Good yeah. news is about getting people on first base. And so we want people to share their story, you know, wherever, whatever your background is, whatever you come from, send us your story and let us, you know, be the platform that you use to share that story in the community. Because you never know who it's going to help to get on first base. 
Yeah, uh, I've seen Bobby Bowden speak. He is quite the speaker, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you did you did a good job weaving the yarn uh-huh. <laughs> as well. I kind of feel like I need to pass around the collection plate. <laughs> uh, amen. You, you have to sing first. <laughs> okay, we don't, we don't want to go there. Um, all right, let's let's get back on track. Um, so uh, this is an interesting group, Thomas, and I always. Thomas always pulls a theme, yeah, and I, and I'm sensing the theme this week is is service and and spiritual connection and faith based and things like that. Am I am I heading down the right road there, Thomas? That was my first road that, that I wrote down today. Yeah, serving, share, we, we are sharing. You know, we are supporting each other. We preparing, we supporting. So, um, you know, it's a it's a beautiful subject today. I love it, uh, Jennifer. What what is how did you get involved with the Group Community Care? What's your background? So I, it was seven years ago, um, I was actually working at a Mexican restaurant, Mia La San, down on 2nd Avenue, uh-huh. and my coworker was doing a, um, a, she was, she did a, well, she was employed by a staff company to work for a mayor group, and she's like, hey, I got a new job, do you want me to recommend you? And I was like, sure, <laughs> sure, why not, let's try it. So yeah, I started, um, I, 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 they hired me through a staffing company to work for a mayor group. And a couple of months later, they, they offered me a full-time job. I was at GNTC um, doing marketing. So I'm part now of the marketing team. So here I am. Yeah. Uh, here, I am. And right. here, here you are. And, and Joan, you mentioned that you're a teacher. I right. teach for Kennesaw mainly. Okay. Okay, and, and what's, what subjects? Well, interestingly, um, when you're talking about service, and Kiwana is all about service and serving children and youth, I teach business. I've taught a lot of leadership classes. I'm teaching social justice, but I'm teaching several business classes. And with that and the leadership classes, it's really interesting how students will often think that servant leadership cannot be done in a lot of professions, that it's not the way to to manage in a lot of professions. And I've always focused on the servant leadership aspect of leadership. You know, there's mm-hmm. that's authentic, trans, transformational, and, and, and the, they go together and they interweave. But the service leadership, I've always said if I have to pick one, that's the one. And it does make any business better, mm-hmm. more profitable, more successful, and it's proven. And nowadays that's coming out in the literature, um, by the leaders, and they're writing books. I'm reading a book by Bill Marriott right now. He's a business hero of mine. And um, and one of the books he has out is about service. And um, that's his philosophy. It's the largest hotel chain in the world besides everything else they own. So it obviously works. So I try to impart that to the students that you actually can and should be a servant leader in everything you do. Oh, that's kind of like Bobby Bowden. Right. You know, and and uh, but so what attracted you to Kiwanis? How, how long have you been involved? Well, I was at Shorter College at the time, and I was very involved in the chamber because I was the career coordinator there, started that office. And one of the Kiwanians, it's the membership guru of all time, and I'll say his name, John Pillsbury. He's gotten the Heart of the Community Award. Great fella. He asked me to, to come, and I went, and I joined. And that was 2005. Mm-hmm. And I've been there ever since, um, other than a year when I was in St. Croix. And so, I, obviously, I couldn't attend. But um, it's it's a fabulous organization because it's a great group of people. We learn a lot at every meeting, but we also believe we have to put our actions um, behind it. And that's another very important component of, of service and, and caring. It's one thing to say, oh, I believe in this or this is good, but you have to put your action um, behind your your words and your feelings, but um, I've just been in it ever since. I love the people. I love what we do, and um, I try to be as active as possible. Actually, we're doing a bell ringing with the Salvation Army in December, and um, we just helped Pepperell High School with um, projects that they had going on. We always have something going on right. um, besides our sales and plug for our peach sales. <laughs> we used to have apples, pecans, but our peach mm-hmm. sales brings in a lot of money for student scholarships. So check out the Kiwanis Club. Is that in the spring? RomeKiwanisClub.org. Um, it's usually it's in the summer, and it depends on how the peaches are doing when we have it. Gotcha. Um, it's very peach dependent. Yes. <laughs> so it's <laughs> July, June, July. 
Okay. Awesome. Where, where do you meet? Do you have a location? Where, where you guys? Well, thank you. Um, nowadays, we meet every other week, uh, the first and the third Tuesdays, and we're at the Sam's Burgers uh, restaurant. Oh, our merchant. Our merchant, <laughs> yeah. Everybody knows where Sam's is. Well, it's kind of like Life Church. We've met, we've met in a lot of different <laughs> places over the years, a lot of different places, but Sam's has been working out really well. We've been there for a while now. Um, we meet at noon, and lunch is included, and we always welcome people to visit, and we welcome people to join. We're looking for new members. So, y'all, think about it. But come visit, and maybe you'll want to join. Okay. Absolutely. Um Mandy, you, you say you moved to Rome with your husband to, as when Life Church started. That's that, right. Where, where are you from? What's your background? Um, I grew up in the Stone Mountain. Went to Tucker High School. Okay, um, so you're I'm, a Tucker Tiger. I am a Tucker Tiger. Yes. Um, so I went to the University of Georgia, got a degree in public relations, and had my first job, and said. This is public relations. <laughs> oh no! Um, but I, even that has evolved so much. I mean, you you guys know and understand how things change. But um, my mom was a teacher, and so all my life I said I will not be a teacher. Like I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Um, and so it was so interesting because clearly I am a teacher. Like it's just in my blood. It's who I am. And so um, I came to know the Lord in college. Um, and so my first position, I was on staff at a campus ministry there. And from there, I got a position to actually teach Bible. And that just really opened up that door where I had to kind of submit and say, okay, I am a teacher. I do love it. And I have not stopped since. <laughs> so the, the what is, what What's the age range of the kids that you work with when you at, at Life Church? So I do birth through fifth grade. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then and then you hand them off to somebody else? I do. I do. <laughs> we get them ready for what we call student life, which is our middle school and high school ministry. And so we have some core values that I want all of my rising middle schoolers to know. I want them to understand that they can trust God no matter what, that they need to make the wise choice, and they need to treat other people the way they want to be treated. As you witness right now, you're also really great in public relations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you're sweet, Thomas. <laughs> well, yeah, it's just funny. You got the kids when they're at the cute age. Uh -huh, Whoever yeah. you hand them off to, they got the middle school, high school years. <laughs> yep, yep. It's true. It's true, and yes. it's interesting because I have I have two of those in my own home, so I totally get it. <laughs> what is what is the is it the Bible verse? It's something in the Bible. Train them up the way they should go, yep, and Proverbs. they shall not depart from it. That's right. So she's surely training them up in good shape for the ones that take them on there. That's right. So, absolutely. <laughs> that, that was a trivia. Qu I was going to say Proverbs too. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> well, I I was just going to guess, though, but you knew it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, okay. The, I'm fascinated by the business model at Good News Christian Magazine because you, you are advertiser supported, but it's also, it's a, it's a free magazine, right? To, right. It's, it's, it's left at places to pick up, but now you're doing the direct mail. Correct. So, like, where can people pick it up and how can people sign up for direct mail if they just want it delivered to their house? Well, they can pick it up throughout the community. Okay. I mean, the advertisers that are in the magazine, we're, we're leaving some uh, in each of their businesses. Uh, we're also just trying to put it out as, as many places as would want it to, for people to have more access to it. So if somebody wanted it like in your business, then you just let us know. Either contact through uh, phone, email, you know, through social media, something like that. We're, our magazine is also available digitally. Uh, off website, uh, we post that on our social media. Uh, also, we have an app, and the app is great. Whether it's Android or, or Apple phone, either way, uh, you can take it with you wherever you go, and it pulls up the actual magazine, and you can read through it. So the app is something that's brand new that I think is going to be really big in the long term because of COVID and, and just people access – you know, for people, it's going to be so easy. Yeah. And so if it's available on your phone, then obviously it's going to be on your tablet. You can pull it up on your computer. So, it, you know, so much of things now where print maybe not be so easy to get now because coming out of COVID, uh, having it digitally, especially on that app where people will just pull it up and, and get it. So, but, but if somebody does want the actual print, and they don't know exactly where to get it. Uh, it comes out the first of every month, and I'm the one taking it around, making sure people are having it. And, and I'm always looking for new locations. I'm looking for high-volume locations. There's some businesses that, um, like, I'll drop some off, and I might go by there and, and eat if it's a restaurant or something, and they're all gone. 
I, I may drop 50 issues off and they're gone in two days and I have to put more in there. And it's just, there's some places, big demand. It really depends on the foot traffic and, and the type of, you know, people that know they're there. That's one of the things I am working on is to put an actual distribution list together that I know there's going to be high volume places that you can just walk in and, oh, okay, it's going to be here all the time. And so people can look for it. But, I, but people really need to, we're going to really work on people uh, knowing about the digital aspect of uh, it's so easy to just pull up on your phone and you got it all the time because it's a free app right. also. Um, and it's just easy to, easy to work. So um, it's a monthly, it, yes. you, you touched on that. It's a monthly and you guys, you basically serve Northwest Georgia. You started in Cleveland, Tennessee. Is it kind of, a, is, well, I guess digitally it doesn't matter. <laughs> right. So we, we currently have four that we, Put out four different communities. They're all good news. So we have good news, Cleveland, Tennessee. We have good news, Dalton, Georgia. We have good news, Fordo and Ringgold. And then we also have good news, Rome. And then we're hoping in 2022 to start good news, uh, Cartersville. So we are just continuing to expand. And like I said before, when we started in Cleveland, it, it took off so much faster than we had even thought. We started having people in Fordo and Ringgold and Dalton reaching out to us. And then once we moved into those markets, we had people in Rome, you know, businesses and churches reaching out to us. How can we get one here? And now we've got, you know, Cartersville reaching out, Fort Payne, Alabama reaching out, and just more and more people in these times are looking for encouraging content. And so when we can, again, take local articles, that's what makes this magazine work so well. When we can, when we can take a local, art, a local person to submit an article – well, guess what? They're going to get on their social media and they're going to share, hey, check out my article on Good News this month. Mm-hmm. Or the business that advertises is going to say, hey, pick up the Good News magazine. And so um, a lot of people are afraid of doing print, but we are so much more than print. Like I said, we got the print, direct mail, social media, digital, video, all for one price. And it's so affordable. I mean, as little as 150 bucks a month, you can get that entire package and I mean, if you go out and you just try to get a social media package, you'll be spending more than that. Sure. So to be able to get direct mail on top of that and the video interviews that are, we're so excited that they just got shot this Tuesday. So we're hoping to launch them here in the next week or two. Um, but go into the businesses and, and really do a really neat interview and commercial for them. Uh well, and it's it's uh, you've just actually passed us copies around yes. the table here, and it's 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 nice. It's a well, thank magazine. Yeah. 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 The the pictures are nice and uh-huh. and uh, colorful, and um, obviously, uh, and and the fact that you ac- acquire your content from anybody that wants to provide content is right. an interesting business model. Yeah, and um, when we we started it up, you know, we were we were wondering that how how are we going to go about getting content? And we didn't want to have to pull content. I mean, we could get content from big names, you know, out of Atlanta and out of all these other places. But why would somebody in why would somebody in Rome want to pick up this magazine? It's if Romans are writing for the magazine, they're going to pick it up because they go to church with them, they go to work with them, they go to school with them. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's how we're able to connect to each community is is through the people right here in Rome. And I like the forward thinking of you guys too, you know, it's like switching slowly into, you know, the digital market, you know, because in a few years, uh, you know, the kids growing up right now, they don't even know what paper is anymore. So, uh, yeah. But you got to be thinking about, you know, the generations to come and sometimes, you know, your your customers or you people you deal with in the community, sometimes you just have to take them by the hand and introduce them to that new medium because they're a little hesitant, you know? Um, And that's what I always tell uh, our members to come to this podcast, you know, because they think, hey, I have a microphone on, I'm, uh, you know, they're they're getting a little nervous. Nervous, (laughs) But, you know, it's just a conversation at the table and the same with, with, you know, the digital work. You know, they they think, you know, we need all this equipment, but all you really need is a phone, but you you can guide them and direct them and, you know... um, bring him into that digital uh, arm of your right. of your yeah. media group. Well, and Love as a it. church, I just want to say thank you. I mean, you guys have this beautiful Rome church directory. And so we know people are moving into town or if there are things going on in their life and they're like, hey, I need a church. And this is right. wonderful. And so I, I appreciate yeah. you guys providing that service. And, you know, you have our address and our phone number and um, 
We really appreciate <laughs> well, that. Well, one Thank thing you. that a lot of churches don't understand right. is we provide free advertising for churches. Right, right. And how do we do that? We do that through their activities and events. Mm-hmm. So if you have a Christmas musical coming up or if you have a VBS, mm-hmm. you know, talking to a, a children's pastor. So if you have VBS, something like that. Churches submit vacation Bible school yeah. for people who <laughs> yeah, vacation Bible school. You so <laughs> submit us your events and we will post them on our social media. We'll post them. We'll publish them in the magazine for free. That's awesome. Well, we are in what the a Bi- wonderful resource. That, that's a big section. We are in the Bible Belt. That's right. <laughs> that's, it is that's a big right. section. The, ch- it the is. church directory. That's it good. It is. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, and Mary Group. That's a great. You know. You know. It is. I know. Uh, I just have to to, to, to reach out to to potential new and new clients. Yeah. Wait, I have to give kudos to AmeriGroup. I don't know if you remember, or uh, a few years back, you were a foster uh, family. Aww. We were fostering uh, children, and they had to have your your service yes. through DFAC. So, yes. um, but uh, I can only say good good things about AmeriGroup mm-hmm. uh, taking care because they have special needs and. Uh, yeah, that's you, right. You were so, helpful and supportive of that. Yeah, so AmeriGroup is also um, the plan for all foster kids in DJJ. I know I'm missing another one. I won't talk too much about it because that's not my department. <laughs> so I don't want I don't want to say something it's misleading. But yes, we do um we do amazing initiatives and support our foster families a lot. Yes, that's so helpful. Yes. Man. Um well let's let's kind of go around the table one last time here and everybody can mention anything that they might have forgotten that they wanted to make sure they mentioned or contact information, social media, uh websites, how people can follow you, connect with you when your services are. Yeah how people can reach out to a mayor group if they need help. So um, Jennifer, I guess we'll start with you. Yeah. Uh, Final thoughts or contact information or both. I do want to share that the Medicare renewal extension has been um, extended until the end of the year. So um, if you don't know, so every time a family is approved for Medicare, Peach Care for Kids or Planning for Healthy Babies, um, they have to renew once a year. But because of COVID, um, they extended the state extended the okay. benefits. So there's no renewal as right now. After 2021, um, they will have to check their mail and see if they get something in the mail and then renew their benefits um, using the Georgia Gateway website. Okay. Um, and then I think that is it for me. And there's a lot. We do have a community resource link that you can also find on my America Group Georgia if you're looking for a job, housing, food distribution. Um, you just put your zip code um, and you will find all the agencies and um, community that faith based, like I said, and you can find all, all the stuff in there. And what was that website again? That um, you will go to Meyer Mayor group, Georgia, go to the community tab and then you'll find the community resource link. You'll be able to put your zip code. And if you're looking for housing, um, the, the tab will open for all housing opportunities. Okay. And that's zip code. All right. Thank you. Uh, Joan Kiwanis club. Well, first of all, I'd like to offer um, everyone here to come speak at some point (laughs) when we have openings because we're always looking for great speakers. And I thank you for having me here. Um, I I believe in Kiwanis. I think that we've discussed that a good bit today when you start with the youth. um, And that was one of the the early Kiwanis slogans was um, build. um, you're, You're building them up for a better, more successful, happier future. So I would love for everybody to check out the RomeKiwanis.org website, www.RomeKiwanis.org. You can email us at um, KiwanisClubOfRome at gmail.com. I'll make sure I'm giving you that correctly, but it is KiwanisClubOfRome at gmail.com. And we're on Facebook, so check out our Facebook page. And please, please, please remember us in the summer when we do our big peach sales, fresh peaches, uh, we, we give a lot of way, a lot of us, um, but, um, and actually a community member that passed recently, Jim Bradshaw, he used to carry big boxes of them to the nursing homes. Um, but they're, they're a big time favor and they're a big fundraiser for us to give college scholarships as we do, um, many of those every year. Alrighty. Thank you. Mandy, Life Church, when your services are, how can people get involved, location, website, social, you name it. Absolutely. So um, come visit us on a Sunday morning. We have services at 930 and 11 right there on John Davenport. But you can also um, catch our live stream at lcrome.com. It's a great opportunity to check out our latest sermon series or our worship or um, just kind of plug in there. If you're not quite comfortable coming to a service yet, that'll give you a good feel of what it's all about. Um, Our website is loaded with 
um, tours of kid life so you can see what your children would be in for. And so that's a great resource. We're on Facebook and Instagram as well. Um, but I really encourage you to, to find a church and come and be a part. And you can wear jeans, right? You can wear <laughs> jeans, yes. We're, that's we're that's casual, point. Sold on the jeans, absolutely. <laughs> I like that. Yes, uh, I love sure. jeans. I kind of feel like I need to dress up, though, for God. <laughs> no, 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 jeans are great. <laughs> you, do, you wear what you want to. Yeah, it's not important. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just teasing. I, I, I love that. Um, uh, Mark and Matt, uh, Good News Christian Magazine, just more information, website, how can people connect? Yeah, you connect. Uh, just reach out to us. Uh, you have my email, rome.goodnews at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to check out the app available on Droid or iPhone, it's just Good News Christian Magazine. Um, I think it's actually listed as just Good News Magazine okay. is how it's listed under the app. Um, but uh, all the contact information in there on Facebook, uh, Good News Christian Magazine Rome, uh, you can reach out through that. Um, if anybody, you know, has anything going on in the community that you just want somebody else to be a part of to whether it's doing pictures or a live stream or something like that, that just helping out or just being there, being part of it, help out. Let me know. I'd love to get involved. I'm born and raised in Rome. So I really, that's the reason I got involved to be part of the community, get in touch with everybody, bring everybody together. And that's what we're really trying to do. Like Matt was saying, get everybody involved in it. And so just reach out to us. Let me know, and we'd, we'll figure something out and, and see what we can do to help out. And last question for you. How did you guys choose the name of the magazine? I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, the power of positivity. And that's the gospel according to Mark and Matthew. Right. Um, <laughs> to, uh, Thomas, final thoughts from the chamber? Well, no doubts about that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, great group. Um, we're glad to have you uh, as our membership. And um, this was an awesome group, you know, great conversations. And listeners, if you have any questions, if there was too much information, just reach out to the chamber and we connect you to the right people. Also, um, we just uh, got confirmed a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we will be, be back at the Forum River Center um, January 13th with the Chamber Expo. Oh, yeah. Right. So awesome. that's that's usually in November, but you know the court was, took took that over, so we had to <laughs> kind of a little bit push them out. But it's going to be the first big event um, at the forum, and um, right. we are happy to host it there. So uh, put in your calendars, everybody. It's um, breaking news, Thomas. So we, Jan- put it the, we put it at the end of the show, and it's breaking news. <laughs> January thirteenth. So uh, reserve your booths. So uh, we'll be there. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, well, that's good news. Um, okay, as we wrap up here, does I, I feel like we need to do a benediction? But <laughs> no, I, I, I'm good. Uh, and or pass around the collection plate. I'll use that joke again. No, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much, everybody, for participating. Um, this is this has been a fun show, Thomas. You you always assemble a good group. And, yeah, and thank and, you. And, and this has been great. So uh, for Thomas Kislat. I'm Roger Manus. You've been listening to Rome Business Radio, the Rome Ploy Chamber Small Business Spotlight, broadcasting from the Hardy Realty Studios, and we work in cooperation with the Rome News Tribune. Thank you so much for listening.